All right, so welcome to our town hall for students. We are super excited to have some students back in person for the first time since last March. Um, we're doing a soft opening next week, um, which will be the first time I think anybody beyond library staff has been in the building in a while. Um, but we are wanting to certainly make everything as helpful and cozy as we can, given the circumstances. Um, but the first big change is that we are changing the way you enter and exit McCain. So um, you will need your ID and you will, we'll show you a picture of this in just a minute, but you'll come in on the side of the building that faces Alston and um, so you'll have to scan the exterior door there and then scan your ID at the door coming into the main library space. And then you would come upstairs to floor one and go out the front door. Um, and you'll find, Grace, a lot of the um, buildings on campus are going to have one-way traffic patterns like that. So, so it won't be unusual for us to be doing that. Um, but hopefully, everybody will get used to it after we've done it a few times. So this is the side view of the building. And um, Alston is over here. And so you would scan your ID on the left of this exterior door. And then again, um, at this, the left of this interior door coming into the main library. And once you come into the library, you'll notice um, there is a reserved pr priority area for commuter students. We were asked to do that. So there's a variety of seating options and computers and access to restroom and printer and so forth. Um, on the north side of the ground floor um, that is prioritized for commuter students, but of course it's available. They can certainly sit anywhere in the building if they choose to, but we were just asked to try and make a space available that does give them some priority. So um, we are only going to be able to accommodate 125 people in the building at a time, and we have reduced our furniture for social distancing purposes to 111 seats among the seven floors that we have. So we just ask if you come in and don't find an available seat that you check back in a little while. Uh, and we will have building occupancy software um, in place to help us um, know when we're getting close to that threshold if we are. Um, and as in most campus spaces, all campus spaces for the spring, um, we will ask you to wear a face covering a mask at all times when you're here and um, practice social distancing. Um, there are sanitation stations throughout the building. So there'd be um, hand sanitizer and wipes and extra masks. Um, if they're not at the hand sanitizer stations, we're still waiting for facilities to stock those. We do have extra masks at the circulation desk on the first floor. So if you forget one, you're welcome to ask us for one there. Um, and we will ask that you don't move the furniture because we have set it in place to, to meet the CDC guidelines. And you'll also see um, plexiglass dividers at computer desks and some of the larger tables. Um, so those, those will hopefully make you feel a little safer. Um, and we're gonna talk next about some of the things that you can borrow from us and what we can do to help you with our courses. So your courses rather. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Christopher Bishop for our next section. Okay, so first thing we're gonna talk about is course, course reserves. Normally we would have course reserves. Um, we would have print textbooks and other books that are assigned for class. And you would come in and check those out for two hours because of the pandemic and the need to quarantine materials, we don't wanna circulate print materials for shorter amounts of time. So what'll happen is you'll still be able to access items that are on reserve, um, but what you'll do is you'll come in or you could email or you can come in and say, hey, I need this chapter from this textbook or I need these pages from, from this uh, novel that my, professor assigned. And then what we'll do is we will scan those pages if we haven't already scanned them. And then we'll share those with you through a Google Drive. And you'll have access to those for two hours at a time. And then it'll remove that access. The reason we're doing that is because if we if, if we were to scan part of the book and then just give you that part of the book, that would be there would be problems with copyright and fair use. Whereas if we own a copy of the book and we scan it and make it digitally available to you, but you're not able to download it, share it, or print it, then we're still within copyright. Should say too, we had students last semester who were borrowing books, print books, for longer periods of time, like 
the entire semester and we would just scan parts of the book or I don't think anyone ever asked for a whole book, but there were certainly students who wanted multiple chapters. We would scan those for them and then make them available for longer durations. So we have, I'll show you a few examples of this. We definitely have lots of eBooks um, and obviously there's lots of academic databases and articles and things like that, but our print collection, this is a way for us to make those available. And when you go into, from the library homepage, you can click on course reserves. And then once you're in there, if you go into like, uh, we'll go into French 101, 102, you will see there's um, those two, I think all three of these books say available McCain Library Reserve two hours. And then you see below it has a note that says to request electronic access to print books, please email. So you would just email and then we would receive that email and then we would send you um, basically the URL for those pages and then you would get to look at those. Also in here, there are eBooks. Um, I think if you wanna to go to the Women's Studies, the, I think it was 250, Liz, I think that has some eBooks. And then also there are streaming videos that are put on course reserves. What's nice about that is if you don't have access to something through Prime or Netflix or something like that, that you would watch on your own. And oftentimes things that are assigned aren't available, then you can stream them through these course reserves. As you can see here though, um, the third book, Transgender History, that we have in print, but we also have as an ebook. So you would be able to view it on any device at any time. Um, if you are not, for students especially, if you don't see a book, let's say you ordered a book, we all know the postal system's um, delayed right now, let's say you order a book for a class, and you know it's going to be another week before it shows up, but you still ordered a copy, you can certainly look on course reserves, and then look there for the book. If you don't see it there, you can email this at the email access services at agnescott.edu, and just say, hey, I don't see okay. that book. Um, was this something you were going to add to course reserves? If we've already tried to order it because the professor asked for it and we can't, um, we aren't able to order it, then we would let you know. But if it hasn't been requested, then we'll basically take your request as initiating a request on our part. And then we'll look for that. And then if we can, we'll be able to email you back and say, oh, we were able to add that to reserves. So I say, you know, if there's a delay in getting the book, I know a lot of students like to have their own copies. But also if you're just being frugal and we own the um, book on course reserves or we're able to get it for course reserves, then you would be able to access it that way. I think the only thing with course reserves to remember is that if we have a copy, then we can loan that copy. If we, you can see on this slide, there's five copies of that calculus book. So in that case, the chances of all five of those being in use at once is highly unlikely. So you might want to just check and um, see what you see on course reserves and then check with us again. But definitely there are some students who don't buy books and just depend on course reserves. The only thing I would caution there again is make sure that you're thinking ahead because sometimes We'll have five students come in at the same time to borrow one reserve book because they need to do the reading and the classes in two hours. That's usually caused a problem. And, um, and then, go ahead. Sorry, I was just, are you going to mention the, the caveat at the bottom there? Too? Yeah, I was going to say, so previously we were buying, buying certain textbooks based on um, them being like intro classes or costs, things like that. But we've moved away from that because a lot of times textbooks have supplementary materials that we're not able to purchase or only come with one license. So what we do now is we look at each request separately and then whether we can acquire it or not, especially because of the pandemic, a uh, cat that does all our ordering is trying to look more at electronic resources when possible, but if not, then physical materials. And then if those aren't available, then we wouldn't be able to acquire, but we'll take those in case by case basis. And I can't say enough, um, cause I know it's also being recorded for other students. If a student knows they need something and you check on course reserves and it's not there, please let us know. And we are more than happy to look for it because we depend on both students at this point and faculty to let us know what they need. And you also may want to check with the student emergency fund um, if it's an issue for you to get a book that has the expensive individual codes. Uh, we're just not able to buy it through the library because we're trying to serve all students and it, it doesn't work um, when it's a marketplace item that's aimed at an in individual student. There were a number, a number of instances where we were able to, through the emergency fund, help supply 
um, textbooks or other reading materials, but certainly there were a number of cases where the school purchased those textbooks for the student. Yeah. All right, we're we ready for our next slide. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we've been doing this last semester is um, if a Agnes Scott student, faculty, staff member wanted a book or a piece of equipment, they would place a hold and then come to the door and then retrieve that item. For safety reasons, we're going to um, prefer that students place a request in our catalog, WorldCat, where we just were to look at course reserves, and then request a book, and then we will go and retrieve it for you. And then you'll receive an email after you've placed that hold, and it'll tell you that it's ready to pick up. If for some reason we can't find the book, or it's damaged or something like that, then we would give you alternatives such as interlibrary loan that um, Stephanie will talk about in a little bit. But but the vast majority of the time we find that book, make it available to you. I would say expect about a day turnaround, but really it's probably a few hours because we'll check on those throughout the day to make them available to you. Um, and I'll talk more about equipment. We have a pretty large equipment collection, but that's basically how you want to. You want to place a hold and then you can either come in the library and pick it up or also, if you don't feel comfortable coming in the library because you just don't want to be around other people, for whatever reason, you can always call and then we would just bring it out to you. And then also Liz ordered some lockers that we're going to put on the ground floor where, uh, if you haven't been here before, by the CDVL and they'll be right in front of the library um, entrance on the first on the ground floor. and we'll be able to put things in the locker and you'll be able to pick those up after hours. So we won't be open on Saturdays, but you would be able to pick up from the locker then or during the evening after we're closed or before we open, you'd be able to pick up items that way. And you can place those for equipment, um, books, DVDs, anything physical you can place a hold for. And then Books, uh, World WorldCat is the catalog that we use. It includes all of our holdings. Uh, it also includes our equipment, um, DVDs, uh, streaming um, films are in there. Also eBooks, all of our eBooks are there. So WorldCat contains all of our holdings. A really cool thing about um, WorldCat, if you haven't gotten to use it yet, is also that in addition to our holdings, it includes holdings from other libraries around the world, which is great for locating things. Um, when you're in there, if you're just looking for things that are owned by Agnes, you can limit our, the holdings to Agnes Scott, and then you can place the hold from that. And then, as I said, you can pick up at the circulation desk, or you can call and we will um, send those items to you, or we'll bring those items out to you. And then bicycles, we have seven bikes of all sizes, uh, some very small ones and some very large ones. I'm pretty tall and some of those bikes would probably be even too tall for me. So regardless of, of how tall you are, those bikes will work. There's seven bikes. Some of them have baskets on the front, which allow you to, if you need to go and pick up some things um, locally, or you can go to, there have been students that have gone to other campuses. Um, I don't want to say nearby, but campus is somewhat in the vicinity of Agnes Scott to pick up things. That would be kind of problematic right now because of the pandemic and that, but normally you could. But certainly the bikes are great if you just want to go out and take a ride um, in Decatur or you need to go pick up something. Mm -hmm. uh, you just want some there. fresh air. Mm -hmm. Go to the park. It's great. And those basically you come in, you can uh, check those out first thing in the morning when we open and then they're due back at dark. And equipment, you can see um, a menu over on the right. And then also there's a full menu that is on our website. We have cameras, tripods, camcorders, all kinds of film equipment like lights, um, voice recorders, uh, projectors, laptops, iPads, graphing, graphing calculators, dongles, chargers. I can't really think at this point of any equipment item that we don't have at least a few of. Some things like cameras, I think we're up to, I think we're up to about 20 or 25 cameras at this point. Um, so any kind of equipment that you could possibly need, we would should have on hand. Uh, one caveat that's going to be important this semester that wasn't so much an issue uh, pre-pandemic, 
is that we're going to have to quarantine things for three days after they're returned. So it may be that we're going to have a little less of a supply than we normally would. When you go in, you can place a hold request for equipment. What might be a good idea is to go in if you know you're going to need a camera two weeks from now or a tripod or um, a microphone or something like that would be to go in in advance and place a hold. And that way, when that day comes, it would be uh, available to you for sure. Whereas if you come in this the morning of that you need it, it may be there. there there's certainly a chance with things that we own more of like cameras or tripods. But when you get into some things like microphones or uh, boom mics or things like that, we only own a few. So that might be a little more um, of a issue. And films, we have a lot of DVDs, both documentaries and feature films. We also have a portable DVD and Blu-ray players. We have projectors. We have um, large, a large screen too that you can borrow. Sometimes students come in and we'll have kind of a film night for other students. Now, I say that, I guess that would be problematic at this point, but I guess if you were outside maybe in a wider area with mask on, I just thought of that, like, you know, there's so many things that we're used to doing a certain way. And I was like, well, maybe you can't, but you could come in, an individual student could certainly come in and borrow that um, if you don't really, well, if you're tired of watching things on your laptop, you could watch it on a bigger screen, again, borrow a DVD or a Blu-ray player and that. Uh, we also have streaming video. You'll see some of your professors will use streaming video for um, films that you'll watch in class or that will be assigned to you, but they're Canopy and academic video online. So that's a great resource too. All right, do we have any questions at this point before we go on to our next section? Oh, I'm ready to move on, thanks. All right, I'm going to turn it over to our colleague Casey Long next. Hi, so um, now I'm gonna talk about research tools and services. So um, if you don't mind moving to the next slide, Liz. So all of our, many of our research tools are already available electronically. It's pretty much only our book collection and the DVDs that are utilized for research um, and a few print journals that we would have here in the library that are not accessible to people remotely. Um, but in the middle of the library homepage, so the library homepage is, I just put the link in the chat. Um, if you go to that page, you'll see in the middle of the homepage that are, there are links to all of our core resources. So the discover search box is going to go ahead and um, let you search by topic and pretty much find something about almost everything. It searches almost all of our da databases, but not quite. If you're looking for newspapers, it's really not the best um, tool. You'll notice that right underneath the discover search box, there's a link to what we call Galileo and then databases A to Z. Within those, you'll find other databases um, that are subject specific um, or might be resource specific. So if you're looking for uh, primary sources, newspapers, you may want to search that list and you can sort it by subject. So we're happy to help you with that. So that's what you'll find there. And for the most part, that's your best starting point. Uh, you can see up there that it has fine books, which Chris already covered the catalog. So that's an easy point to that. And if there's a magazine or newspaper that you need that you know specifically that you have to read that one, for instance, you might be taking an economics class and you have to read the Wall Street Journal, or a professor might want you to read the New York Times every day. You can click on find journals and you'd be able to type in the name of that publication. It'll tell you which database we have the full text of that. Uh, under find guides, there are how-to guides of how you can do research by subject. And then finally, another link to reserves, which Chris talked about previously. So that's what you'll see there in terms of the research tools that we have. And most of those are available 24 seven from anywhere. I'm gonna go ahead, since um, Discover will sometimes lead you to things that we don't own electronically or physically, I wanna turn it over to Stephanie Kurth for just a moment so she can talk about interlibrary loan. She's our interlibrary loan specialist. Hi, yeah, so interlibrary loan um, is when we borrow items from other libraries um, for you to um, use. Um, we're really lucky here in the Atlanta area. Um, we are surrounded by great libraries, say um, Emory, University of Georgia, Georgia State. Um, we have agreements with all of these libraries that we can borrow materials um, from them. 
Um, they ha we have a van that makes deliveries two times a week for, um, for physical print items that then you can hear, come here to McCain Library to pick up. Um, if you're off campus and for students who are remote, um, we can get scans of articles or book chapters. If you're really interested in a book, um, but you don't know exactly what you want, we can get scans of table, the table of contents or the index, um, and I can email that to you. Like I so said, with print items, um, you know, things can get here in a couple of days. If it's something more obscure and no local library has it, we do request, we request things by mail. That sometimes can take um, a week or so. Um, as far as the scans though, you're looking at about a day or two turnaround and you'll have that in your, your inbox. Um, the way to request items, there are two different ways you can do that. Um, if you're searching in WorldCat, which is our catalog, and you find something that looks so great, but we don't own it, there's a little button right in the catalog, um, request from other libraries, and you can put your request in there. If you already know something that you want and you know we don't have it, and you really don't want to take the time to go into the catalog, there's a link on the interlibrary loan page um, on, from the library website that you can enter your request there. And I was just gonna add, there's no charge for students yep. um, unless you happen to lose the book, which we hope you won't do. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we wanna say anything about interlibrary use while we're on this page, Stephanie? Sure. Um, it's a interlibrary use. Like I said, we, you know, we're surrounded by these great libraries um, and during, Non-pandemic times, it's really simple. You just get, we issue you a card um, after you've like determined you don't, we don't have the stuff you need here. We can issue you a card to go to these other libraries in person and visit. As far as this semester goes, um, the libraries around here, are, they're kind of different policies. Some are allowing visitors and some are not. So it's kind of a little mixed bag for this semester. Hopefully by next fall, um, all the libraries will be accepting visitors again. But we can make a phone call for you if you know you want to go somewhere and, and check with them and see what their current policy is. So just ask, ask for help if you need that. All right, I'm going to turn it back over to Casey Long. All right, so um, continuing with uh, things on our library homepage. So the first thing that I wanna mention is that we've covered several different types of things that you can borrow so far, things that you can access electronically, um, just different types of services that are available and your head might be spinning. How do I place a request? How do I um, request the interlibrary loan? How do I find out if a bike is available? These things are all things that we can help you with. Um, if, just as long as you know that for the most part, if there's a book out there, an article out there, a magazine or newspaper that you need, most likely we will be able to get that to you whether you're here on campus or off campus. So what you need to do is just ask us. Um, we are very excited to talk to students. It really honestly makes our day. And so if you look at this homepage, um, you'll see that in the bottom right, there is a need help chat with us chat box between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., we will have that open. So that means that somebody is waiting for you to ask a question and will guide you through whatever it is that you need to find. So whether that's being reminded how to place a request or trying to figure out whether the library owns a book or you need to order it through interlibrary loan. That's how you can get the one-on-one -on -one help that you need immediately. But if you're working on a big research project and you either you just don't know where to start, then right above that box is schedule a research appointment. And that links to the calendars of four librarians here. Um, so you have four people who are predominantly subject specialists or an archivist who are very knowledgeable in their areas that can help you figure out what are the best starting points, talk with you about the ideas that you're thinking about. So maybe you have a very broad topic that you're thinking about doing um, and you're just not sure where to narrow it down, we'll help guide you through that. So we can set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment by phone or you can do it by a Zoom. We'll set up and send you the link to Zoom. But as soon as you schedule that research appointment, it goes directly on our calendar. You're set, you, that appointment's gonna happen and we will be in contact with you about how to, how to meet. So we highly recommend that you um, use those two features to help you understand how to do a lot of the different things that we've already talked about. And if you were thinking, gosh, I wish that this presentation would have talked more about how to 
um, check out equipment and I could really see what the pieces of equipment were or um, really understand how to place that hold and go step by step on it and be able to ask minute questions on it. Well, we have workshops that will be coming up. We have a series called the Skill Builder Series um, and we record all of those events. So um, let me put that link into chat for you. Um, if you go to this website, uh, liveguides.agnescott.edu forward slash skill builder, you'll see the ones that we did last semester and that will help you on your own be able to determine how to improve your skills in these areas. Or you can see the calendar of events that we're gonna be having this upcoming semester. So in the next two weeks, there will be one on events, there will be one on course reserves, and there will be one on finding and accessing books. So go ahead and sign up for those. All right, Do questions we have about any questions right now. All right, I am going to take back over and talk to you a little bit about our physical spaces and resources. Um, if you haven't spent a lot of time in the building, if you're a first year, this um, does offer seven different floors. The front part of the building um, are labeled floors and the back part of the building are labeled stacks. Um, as we mentioned, our book stacks, the shelves are closed for browsing, but um, there are study carrels and different areas to study um, on the stacks floor. So you do have options for studying there. We also have a nice outdoor terrace in the middle of our building on floor one, if the weather's pretty. Um, we have closed our group study rooms for the semester because the furniture that we're having to um, take out of commission uh, because of social distancing is stored in there for the time being. Um, and we normally would reserve study carols to seniors and students doing independent studies. Uh, we are not reserving those, but the carols themselves are available to, to use for studying. Uh, and we just, as I said, ask that you don't move the furniture that we have spaced out for physical distancing uh, and remember to wear your masks. And if you'd like to wipe down anything, um, we will have sanitation stations on, on every floor available for that or just about every floor. Um, we have also reduced the number of computers, but we do have desktop computers on the first floor and the ground floor uh, available first come first serve. Um, we also have laptops that you may borrow at our front desk on the first floor. Um, and ITS is providing keyboard covers. So if you wanna use a, a Clorox wipe on the covers before you start typing, you're more than welcome to do that. And ITS has also been improving the Wi-Fi network and there will be instructions um, before classes start on, on how to access that Wi-Fi on your laptop. But we understand they're gonna go back to calling it what they've called it in the past, which is woof woof Wi-Fi. Uh, you'll just need to register your device one time and then um, enter the password, go Scotties. We also have four uh, what are called Canon printers around the building. There are these two on the first, the main first floor. Uh, there is one right outside where you will enter the library in the, in the CDBL hallway. And then there's one also on the ground floor uh, near our spiral staircase. And those, um, you just send your print job to any of them, um, whatever one is convenient to you on campus and tap your ID at a little panel on the front and then it will release your print job. You can preview it before you print and be sure it's you know, in color if you want that. Um, set it to staple or double-sided or, or any option like that. Those machines also um, are great for scanning and photocopying. And um, this one here on the first floor also is set up to do fax. So if you need to send a fax, check with one of us and we can help you with that. Um, Google Cloud Printing has the support for that has ended. So if you have something on your laptop for now until ITS, if, if they are available or able to figure out a solution, um, they'll let us know. But for now, they're recommending that you just save to something like Google Drive or a flash drive. Um, and we do have USB keys that you can borrow at the circulation desk. Um, but just you know, put it on a, a desktop, find it through your desktop computer on the, on the library. Um, floors and then send it to the printer that way. Um, what am I forgetting here, folks? I think, oh, we also have a flatbed scanner on floor one if you prefer that to what you can do here. And I'm going to turn it next to uh, Casey Westerman, our archivist, to tell you a little bit about our archives. Okay, so just to kind of introduce the audience to the college archives and special collections. 
Um, this is the library's repository for information about and publications by the college, uh, its faculty, its uh, students, its alumni, its staff, and so on. Um, primarily, we're dealing with college publications, administrative records, and student organization files. Um, we have a few uh, special procedures in place for you know these these unprecedented times. Um, the first to mention is that uh, our museum space, which is the Betty Pope Scott Noble Heritage Center, uh, is currently restricted to no more than three people uh, at a time, socially distanced. Um, but the Heritage Center is open to small groups by appointment. Um, if you'd like to schedule a time to come in and see the historical documents and photographs and artifacts in the room, uh, just contact me at archives at agnescott.edu and we'll schedule a time for you to come visit. <clears throat> um, we have a number of uh, publications by faculty and alumni and uh, some other specialty collections, including uh, materials by Robert Frost and other individuals who have an association with the college. Uh, many of the college's publications have been digitized and those are available and text searchable at the Internet Archive. Uh, and there's a link uh, here in the slideshow. You can also reach that information through the archives website. Um, all of that is text searchable and open to anyone, but if you're searching for something in particular, uh, you're very much invited to contact me and uh, I'll be happy to assist you with the research. Um, materials, physical materials in the archives and special collections don't circulate and uh, this semester, our special collections reading room is closed to researchers, but uh, I'm available to do whatever research can't be done remotely through a digitized collections. Um, you can contact me uh, through email, again, archives at agnescott.edu or cwesterman at agnescott.edu. Uh, either of those will reach me and um, I'm available for face-to-face uh, -face, uh, virtual appointments. Um, typically um, 9 a.m. through 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, get in touch, we'll set up a time. And uh, any material which, again, hasn't already been digitized but exists only physically uh, in the archives uh, can typically be digitized and made available to you within a short period of time. All right, any questions about our archives for Casey? All right, we are almost through here. Um, just want to tell you a few more things. Um, obviously, it's important that you know our hours. We are shortening our hours um, for a variety of reasons this fall, this uh, spring, but um, we hope that that will give you options to, to still get what you need from us. And um, we are, as I mentioned, doing a soft opening starting next Monday, January 11th, um, 8.30 to 4.30. We'll be here all next week. Um, you can try coming in the ground floor and we hope to work out any bugs or issues that we haven't thought of before classes start on the 19th, which is when we will um, start these longer hours. Um, and um, as Mr. Bishop mentioned, we will be putting lockers, six lockers in uh, right outside the interior ground floor door where you would enter the library so that you can pick up things um, on Saturday or at other times when we're closed. We just need to know in advance that you want those things to be placed in the lockers. Uh, and we certainly hope that we'll be able to resume longer hours next fall. And then um, to keep up with any new databases or services or events that we are offering, we encourage you to follow us on social media. We also have an e-newsletter and you can subscribe to that through the library blog. And um, we typically um, announce in the the Irvine, the daily newsletter on campus when those issues are published, but um, you can also subscribe to those. And finally, um, we are certainly happy to help you in any way we can uh, with, with whatever you might need related to information and resources on campus. So please reach out to us. Um, this first address is sort of the main um, library email address that gets to any of us um, and, and one of us will respond as quickly as possible. The next email address for access services is our team that handles things that check out and check back in or the CDL uh, control digital lending scans for reserves. So that's the best address to use if you have a question in that area. And then this is our um, web address. It's just the college address slash library. 
So what questions do you have? Let me check our chat and see. Um, I know we've posted some of our resources here. Did we miss any questions? Anybody notice? Or feel free to unmute yourself and ask if you have any. Um, I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to say thank you all for presenting to us. This was a really helpful resource. Well, we're so glad and we will certainly make this available um, once it's finished processing on Zoom so that the, it'll be available as a resource. And we'll also be available at some of the orientations for first years um, next week. So, and we look forward to seeing you when you're back on campus. All right, thanks so much for joining us today. Bye-bye. All right, thank you. Thanks, have a good evening.